know, someone once called me a one-hit wonder. <laughs> and it's like, how many times can that one-hit wonder hit again? I stun on the gram, I stun on your man, I stun on your chick. Woo! I'm watching the flicks, she got in my whip, little mama will stay. It's me, you know, going to the gym, you know, I gotta work out, I gotta do this, and it's just me trying to take on the world because, you know, your family is always gonna be there no matter what, no matter what's going on. I know that my family's there, my family's always there after the show is over, they did before the show is over. They're there doing the show, and you know, you know, a lot of guys you see, it's like it's a one man show. Yeah, when you go on stage, you're all by yourself, but there's a group of people that help you to get there, and my family included. I'm just excited. Before I was a bodybuilder, I was a soccer player and a swimmer. And, you know, I'm not gonna brag, but I was a really, really good soccer player where, you know, I thought that one day I was gonna end up in, in Europe, you know, you know, playing soccer, maybe in the Premier League or Serie A, you know, you know, wanted to play for um, Manchester United, you know, or, um, you know, I wanted to play for Juventus or Real Madrid. But anyway, you know, moved from Jamaica to the U.S. and I wanted to, soccer wasn't big, well, they, they call it soccer, we call it football. It wasn't as big as, you know, it was in Jamaica. So I decided, hey, what the heck, you know what, I'm gonna focus on track and soccer. I got, you know, plenty of time in the world. You know, there wasn't much going on, so here I am. Uh, four by one and a four by two specialist and a long jumper. And my coach came to me one day and he says, hey, listen, you know what I know? You, you, you're doing soccer and, you know, I, I want for you, I would love for you to, you know, build your endurance. So I would love for you to, you know, this off season to take up, you know, some cross country. <laughs> I'm like thinking, what? Well, no, like cross country. What, what, like, what, what do you mean? Like, you know, just you know, go out, you know, and, and practice with a cross country team. So I'm like, oh, okay. So there was a meet, and like literally, so like, hey, you know, there's gonna be a meet. They would love for you to come. It's great. Just follow the people in front of you. I'm thinking like, how, how bad could this be? I did the actual research. <laughs> what exactly a cross country do when they run. But anyway, I was like, oh, this is great, you know. But knock this out real quick, you know. I'm pretty quick. So we line up and they were like, set, go. And I took off because I'm like, from what I'm seeing, it's basically we making a circle. <laughs> so I took off sprinting like, hey, you know, like I was running 200. Came back, came back around to where we started, and I like somewhat slow down a bit. And everybody run by me, and I'm like, "What the?" And they run in the woods. <laughs> I was like, but dude, I'm a hundred, I'm a sprinter. <laughs> the minute I saw those guys head for the woods, <laughs> I know that wasn't going to be my path. Like you know, no, no. Sometimes we all, well. Day to day life, we all seem to be running a race, um, and we all want to win, you know. But sometimes you just, you know, my coach was right. He was like, "Hey, I need to build my endurance to be, you know, a better sprinter." And sometimes in life, we just feel as if, "Hey, you know what? We needed to, we need to get to the finishing line, you know, so quickly that." The stuff that we need to take care of in order to get to the finish line, we forget. You know, you look at bodybuilding, for instance. You know, I tell everyone, you know, they see you as one of the top, you know, pros in the sport, and they think that you get there overnight. And it took a while for most of us to get to where we at. And because bodybuilding is a marathon, you know. Even when, you know, something as simple as, which is hard to get, is getting your pro card. Now, everybody wants to get a pro card because they feel as if it gets a lot easier when you turn pro. And then you turn pro and then you realize like, oh shit, I just, the work just start, you know. Again, because it's, it's a marathon. 
you know, life is a marathon. There's going to be ups and downs, bumps and bruises, detours and roadblocks that at times we're going to have to find a way either to get over, knock down, or go around. And, you know, I realized that, hey, listen, that I wasn't a cross countryer. <laughs> I needed to practice to become a cross country. I needed the endurance to be a cross country. As I was laying on the floor, you know, watching anybody else run by me, I knew that it just wasn't my craft. I didn't practice. You know, same thing with running at the National Stadium. You know, I just joined in the track team. I was excited. And then I get thrown in. Hey, Roden, heat five. <laughs> I know I wasn't conditioned, you know, to be running against seasoned guys. You know, same thing with bodybuilding, you know. My first year, as a pro, I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> I wasn't even in a call out. It was like, hey, the rest of you guys step forward. And that was my group. The one thing that I learned from that moment was standing there watching all these guys going ahead of me. I realized that, hey, you know what? Even though I might've been a pro bodybuilder, I was still acting like an amateur or still training like an amateur and I needed, you know, to get myself in a better position. I needed to start thinking like a pro, training like a pro, I need to be a pro. I should have been, you know, start acting like a pro and training like a pro before I became a pro. So when I became a pro, it was supposed to be a lot easier. But that is life, folks. Life is a marathon. Don't ever think that it's a sprint. You might get to the finish line and realize there's so many of this shit that you should have done. <laughs> you have to turn around and get all that shit done and start all over again. Take your time and smell the rose every now and then. It's the 5% that most people are not willing to go down that road. The 5% is you get to a point where you're not willing to make that extra sacrifice, whether it's the sacrifice in your cardio, the sacrifice in your diet, like sticking to the diet 100%. That 5% is not pushing yourself to and beyond the limit in your training. Uh, that 5% is being mentally sound, mentally strong, knowing that no matter what happened, that you will be the last man standing. percent most people just give up and they just stick with what they're doing they're not being they're not ready to I like to like take it to that next level the different levels and different gears that I feel as if one is able to get to when they're training and it's like watching the Dragon Ball Z movie where you're super Saiyan but can you become a super 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 Saiyan just pure animal instinct.
just unleash everything that you have and give it everything that you have. That extra 5% is going beyond what you thought you were capable of doing. He may want my head Donald Trump like absolutely insane. You know what? If I was Sean Roden, unfortunately, I'd take it to the gutter. I say, I don't take things to the gutter. Yeah. You know, absent thighs? Uh, Do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big Rami. Um, and I gotta say, I, I really feel bad for Big Rami here. So he says, thank you everyone for the ultimate support you show me by emails and messages. I know that most of you feel disappointed and angry and hate me. So I just want to say, first and foremost, I think I speak for most of us when I say none of us hate Big Rami. In fact, I think we all love Big <laughs> Rami and that's why we are so disappointed. I mean, Big Rami. Yeah, that was Rami. Nobody can beat that. I've never seen anything like that in my life. That's five years, I've never seen that either. So yeah, it's the best that he's uh, definitely yeah. bought. No, but he flew to Tampa for me to look at yeah. him before the Olympia. Yeah, this year. This yeah, year so you look good. Yeah. So you look pretty good. Like, we, we'll, need, we, we need we'll the time. We'll, we'll still got time, but we need it. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Keep your foot in the gas, Sean. Keep your foot in the gas. Yeah, from here, Sean. Yeah. Shift it into another gear. <laughs> I think this is the best condition on an Olympia competitor since... Um, <laughs> this reminds me a lot of J2001. And people are going to see something remarkably special tonight. Sean Roden and Phil Heath on the center line, please. We've seen this play out before as Phil Heath held off a fast charge in Sean Roden several years back. And now we are going to see the rubber match. And what's at stake? The runner-up will win $150,000. The winner will win $400,000. In an Olympia tradition, Bob Chicarella will probably Ladies announce the, the winner. You hear That's right. Will be your 2018 Mr. Olympia. Please take the Sandow Trophy, the Olympia Gold Medal, the Chuck for $400,000, and the title of 2018 Mr. Olympia. To our winner. And new Olympia champion! Ooh, there it is! It has happened in Las Vegas for just the 14th time. We have a new Mr. Olympia. The defending champion has been knocked out. Sean Roden is your 2018 Olympia champion. Phil Heath's run, at least for now, will end at seven in one of the more improbable developments. Phil Heath stands at center stage congratulating the winner, Sean Roden. And I got to tell you, Sean Ray, coming into this weekend, there weren't many people that would have ever dared to predict 
this outcome. Absolutely, and I wasn't one of those guys that thought that for two seconds. However, I talked to a fellow professional bodybuilding friend of mine from Italy, Gianrico Pica, who saw Sean Roden on Wednesday night the day I arrived. He has a show coming up, the Amateur Olympia in Italy next weekend. He said he saw Sean Roden, and Sean Roden was gonna win this show. And I looked him in the eye, and I could not believe what he was saying. Sean Roden has accomplished what no other man has in over 10 years. Our coverage is gonna continue after the break. Stick Las Vegas, Sean Roden has just been crowned Mr. Olympia in one of the more improbable developments in the history of this contest. Very few people saw this coming. There was an expectation that some guys would push Phil to the limit. Sean Roden was not on many of those lists, especially after what played out last year where he finished fifth. And uh, here he is, the final man standing, and Phil Heath's run ends at seven, where he will, he will remain tied with the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. Bob Chick just asked, did the judges get it right? And to a resounding applause, they said yes. I believe Sean's waiting for his kid to come on stage uh -oh. to share the moment. Sean Roden a year ago had a kid, and uh, a couple years ago, I should say, which takes your eye off the prize, and there she is. That dress has got all kinds of stuff on it now, but it's got that gold medal, and she'll remember this moment years to come. And a reminder, do not put your kids in white when you have pro on. I know, sweetie, I feel the same way. Sean Roden, you're the new Mr. Olympia. Wow, what a great fight, Sean. Everybody can see yesterday that you brought it. You brought your A game and you came here to, what's the matter, sweetie? You wanna say something? Daddy. Said hi, Daddy. Hi, Nana. Guess what? Daddy's Mr. Olympia. Hi, Nana. She said congratulations. Here's something you can play with. Look at it. Wow, look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, let's talk with the champ. Sean, congratulations, my friend. You have done the unthinkable. You have beaten the great and seven-time Olympia champion, Phil Heath. You believed in yourself. You told everybody you were not messing around. You came here to win, and you are the new Mr. Olympia. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming out and showing support to all these Amazing athlete, uh, Jim Mannion, AMI, Steve White Merger, all these wonderful judges. Thank you guys so much to my family for making it out here. Man, it's, it's, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey, and I'm thankful for today and yesterday that I was able to fight my way in something that I believed that I was going to be number 14. And you are number 14. Only 14 men in history since 1965 have held this title. Some of those great names that you know, of course. And you just beat a hell of a champion in Phil Heath, the seven-time champion. Nobody thought he could be beaten, but you did it. Yeah, I've been watching Phil since 2012, taking a lot of notes. And I know people might laugh at me when I say that, hey, one day I was going to be Mr. Olympia. But here I am, folks. <laughs> This was probably my hardest prep ever, but I wanted it so bad. I'm thankful that I'm here. Well, Sean, look at that Sandow Trophy down there. That's going to look really nice up on that mantle, isn't it? <sighs> I haven't even think that far, you know. <laughs> this past couple of days has just been a roller coaster. You know, I have a great supporting cast, Chris Cito, Psycho Fitness. My training partner make it to the Olympia for the first time, Stamina. And I'm gonna tell you, man, they beat the crap out of me these past couple of months just to get here. 
And to all you fans out here for your support. You know, every time I look and I hear someone said, Sean is too small. Sean is spending too much time with his family. Sean looked like he's retired. But it's okay. We had a game plan and we stuck to it. And we found a way to come here. We did everything that I possibly could have can to look good in this weekend. Well, Sean, you certainly did more than look good. You look great. And the judge is certainly rewarding that with an Olympia victory. Take, take me through yesterday. After pre-judging, what were your feelings after you stepped off this stage? To be honest, man, I walked out of here yesterday and I looked at Chris and I said, it's only Friday. You know, I know a lot of people had me, you know, winning or a close second, but I just looked at Chris and said, it's only Friday, Chris. We still have Saturday, let's just focus on today. And that's what we did, one day at a time. What did you think when you came here tonight for the final, Sean? Did you think you had it? Did you think Phil was going to eat you? We all know Phil comes back better on Saturday, so you knew you had a battle uh, coming up tonight. But what were your feelings? Did you think you had it? Listen, guys, <laughs> Phil is no slouch. I've been chasing him since 2012, so I know. In the back of my mind, I'm like, hey, you know what? He's missed a Saturday night. He could come in here, and he could look his all-time best. But again, I looked at Chris and Cedar and Chris said, hey, you know what, Sean? You'll be better than you were yesterday. And if that man believe in me, I'm good. All right, Sean Roden, right here in the center, I want you to hit your first pose as your new 2018 Mr. Olympia. Easy to get back, Sean. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. 14. I don't even want to use the word lucky. This was earned Dan the hard way. And please help me in celebrating your new Olympia champion. What's the draw? Sean! Sean Roden, as we've known through the years, is a man of few words. He lets his physique do all the talking. He did just that tonight. And um, it took 54 years. But right, we have well, ourselves a 14th champion. <laughs> making history because the champ just got taken out by Sean Roden, who I can now call Mr. Olympia. How's that feel? Still trying to get it to sink in. Um, feel a little bit surreal. Uh, I, I, I can only imagine. I mean, I've just been watching you go from interview to interview. Winkler's just going to bust into the shot because he can. Thanks, Winkler. 
He can do that. Look, I, I think it's been a very, very popular win. You know, I was backstage here. We're about to start interviewing Flex Lewis, and we thought, just in case, we won't start the interview. And when you are announced as the first place winner, this whole place erupted. Erupted, man. I've never seen anything backstage in all the years like this. The crowd erupted out there. I know you were confident going into it, but this doesn't happen. You know, normally, you just can't beat the champ. It's been close a number of times. When did you know? It's, you know, I started believing in myself a long time ago when most people weren't paying attention. You know, I started studying pictures. As I said, I'm very anal about bodybuilding. So I started studying pictures of, you know, the different types of body that I'm going to be standing on stage with. I start looking at Phil and I keep telling myself, hey, you know what, I can beat Phil. You know, I, I remember in 2015 when Steve switched me next to him and Steve called the first pose, his front double bicep. And I remember looking over at him and he just had that look like, oh shit, like, okay, Roden just caught up to me. And um, I just kept that in the back of my mind, especially for this year where I'm like, hey, you know what, just don't worry about chasing Phil, don't worry about chasing Roley, don't worry about chasing Big Ramy, don't worry about chasing William Bonac. Just bring, just bring the best Sean Roden.